we look at our notes, we can see that youths were separate from adults, right? But then later they came back. So I think I can eliminate A, and it's sort of what we call a, it, it, it's sort of a mixed up answer choice, right? Because it's got something that's in there, but not quite right. It's kind of twisted around. So B, young people are more likely to become involved in an adult-led organization than they were at the youth activists' movement's beginning. So this part I remember from what I just looked at, are more likely to be, it's right, um, are, today young people are more involved in social activism led by adults. I just got to check this second half than they were at the youth activists' movement's beginnings. Let's go to that beginnings part. Let's see, let's see if actually we can consult our map. Mid 19th uh, century youth, uh, youth activism is up and youths were separate from adults, right? At the beginning, and it even says that, remain separated from their adult labor protest through the 1930s. So at the beginning and then later today, so this seems like it's been paraphrased quite nicely and going to hold on to it. If I was in a rush on the GMAT to get through to the last few questions, I'd probably just pick it and move along, but let's work these other answer choices. Youth activists are wary of taking on leadership roles because they fear. I don't recall this being in there. I'd have to be able to point to where the fear was that adults was, will not support the development of youth activities. So if we could find that, we could potentially think about this answer more, but this is extreme and I don't recall that ever being a sentiment in the passage, so I'm going to get rid of that. D, the relationship between young and adult active, youth, young and adult activists is strained and irreparable. Again, this is extreme. This is an extreme answer choice, one of our typical wrong answer choice. They talk about youth and adult activists in the passage and their relationship, but they never mention this part. So great, e, even though young and adult activists work well together, some organizations would be more productive if, if they were youth-led. So they talk about this, they sort of talk about them working together, and I don't know why it must be true that some organizations would be more productive. They don't say that, and there's nothing, that, there's not, that's not a logical step away from uh, what's been said in the passage. B was a pretty strong answer choice. Again, we found the B is a paraphrasing of basically this area. Let's go for it. Awesome. Great. I'm just going to check in with folks and see if people are able to view okay. Some folks are having some streaming problems. Some people seem to be doing all right. Great, so th thanks for the teaching style comment. It can be inferred from the passage that young, so we have another inference question here. It can be inferred from the passage that young people became involved in protesting working conditions in Appalachia's coal mine. So, this seems pretty specific. This looks like something I can find in the passage, and I even kind of remember seeing it. So Appalachia's coal mine, so an inference question. So it can be inferred that young people became involved in protesting, working in conditions because. So let's see what it says here. The youth movement, sorry, a little bit before. The youth movement initially separated, separated young people from their adult counterparts as they organized their own labor strikes to draw attention to the exploitation of children working in Appalachia's coal mines. This form of youth-driven activism occurred as young people became the primary movers within a specific area of the labor movement. So I'm going to back to the question. All right, I don't jump to the answer, I go back to the question. It can be inferred that young people became involved in protesting because, let me see if I can, why did they do it? Because, I'm not sure, they don't give that exact because, so I have to work these answer choices. So, Young people thought that working towards better labor conditions was more important than working towards civil rights. So this isn't addressed and they don't talk about civil rights right here, so I'm pretty sure we can get rid of this. This is not appropriate. Adults were occupied with other labor protests, therefore young people had to take on leadership roles. Let's see what it says. 
Uh, the youth movement initially separated young people from their adult counterparts. So it seems like the adults were busy doing as they organized their own labor strikes. So adults were organizing labor strikes, but the youth separated. So let's hold on to this. I don't want to think too much about it. I want to just go to the other answer choices first. Young people have more time to devote themselves to social causes than adults. They don't talk about having more time. I need to be able to point to it. Um, this is sort of outside info. It's coming out of nowhere. They don't mention this. Adult activists were more concerned with education reform than they were with children's labor exploitation. Adult activists were more concerned with education reform. They don't, they don't recall them talking about education reform anywhere around here or having anything to do with Appalachia's coal mines. Just because they might talk about education, let's see if I can find it, even though I wouldn't do this on test. Um, is education in here? Maybe not. Do not even mention education? Does anyone see education in here? So don't spend too much time looking for it. So I don't recall seeing it. We haven't been able to find it quickly. Oh yeah, there we go, such as education reform. But they're, they're talking about the Appalachia issue over here. So this is a right answer to the wrong question, right? So e e adults had exploited young people in the past and that youth activists did not want to see it happen again. They don't talk about any sort of adult potential exploitation over there. They talk about impressionables, uh, and they talk about exploiting over here. But again, we're talking about this Appalachia coal mine incident, not just any random thing that's in the passage. So these were really well-constructed answer choices to sort of attract us to be in there. But this is the one that's correct. This is actually a very difficult question. Not too many people get it correct. Uh, it's because of the answer choices are really well constructed. Nice work. So we have still the same passage. We're going to work an explicitly stated question. So we saw a main purpose question on this passage. We saw a couple of inference imply questions on this. And let's take a look at something that is uh, explicitly stated. Each of the following criticisms of youth activism is mentioned in the passage. So it's in there, except, ignore this part. I just ignore these. And I just put a little check by each thing, and then one of these things is not like the others, and that's the right answer. So I'll show you how that works. Each of the following criticisms, I should be able to find most of these. Young people do not have enough political power to make a substantial change. Let's talk and see if they have political power. So here's power. It's shallow because society does not offer young people enough power to make actual, and here's change. So I'm IDing these words. Great, let's get rid of that. How about B? Activism that focuses on involving young people may be a shallow endeavor. I think I even remember seeing shallow. So there we go, shallow, shallow. So these are in there, so I'm just getting rid of them. Politicians might be using young people to further their own political ideas. We talk about impressionable. There we go. Let's get rid of that. That's in there. Youth activism will eventually undermine adult activism. I don't recall seeing undermine. Hold on to that. The youth voice may not be as effective as some people think. Here they say uh, may not be as effective as some adults may think. That's in there as well. Let's get rid of them. So that was there, that was there, that was there, and that was there. One of these things is not like the others, and we can go ahead and pick D. If there's an answer choice on one of these that you don't find, don't spend forever looking for it. You know, that's why I left D and I found E, so D must have been the answer. I'm not going to find something that's not in there. Very good. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more question here on this. The author uses the phrase and possibly impressionable. So we have a line reference question, not line reference, paragraph reference, but they gave us the quotations, most likely to emphasize the idea that. So the author uses the phrase and possibly impressionable. 
in paragraph 2. There it is. Most likely to emphasize the idea. So why did the author do this? Why did the author do this? Let's go ahead and read real quickly. Adults have called into question the value of the youth voice by claiming that adult politicians are using young and possibly impressionable people to further a political agenda. So the adults are doing it for themselves. They claim that adults can exploit young people more easily and that the youth voice may not be as effective as some adults may think. So uh, why is the author mentioning this? Let's see. And I keep, and if you notice, I keep saying, why is the author mentioning this? I sort of reword this question to be a question. Uh, you know, to emphasize the idea that is sort of finishing a sentence, I want to give my brain a question to answer. So why did the author do this? Uh, because young people are inherently unsuited as political, you know, this seems a bit extreme. I don't think the author was saying that. He was, sort of, was not negative about young people at all. Young people will likely separate from their adult counterparts in the future. I don't recall him making this prediction. Predictions they love using as incorrect answer choices on the GMAT for whatever reason. Uh, and, and, and adults, why did the, so why did the author do this? Because an adult's impression of a youth activist will determine whether or not the two will work together. They don't talk about the adult's impression. Again, this is explicitly stated. I got to be able to really point to it. So I, I don't know, that wasn't even mentioned. Youth and adult activists are too different to have a successful working relationship. Too different to be successful seems extreme. And again, it's not supported. Must be E, I guess. Let's make sure adults may be able to take advantage of young people whose political ideas have not yet solidified. Solidified is like impressionable. Not yet solidified, rather is like impressionable, so that is something that I can find in there. Great. So that was a passage that we worked the main idea, the couple of inference and a couple of explicitly stated and the process that we had anticipated worked fine, our ability to ID the questions worked fine and our ability to work the answer choices in terms of what we would expect and how they were trying to trick us, especially on that nasty one, worked well too. So we can turn ourselves into a GMAT reading comprehension robot. Robot. I like checking in to see how people are doing. So we got a good 40 people us. Uh, except questions can be seen on easy questions, medium questions, or difficult questions. Sukriti uh, has a, had a question here about um, is it true that except questions are normally seen when you have reached an advanced level? Uh, sure, you can see them because it can certainly make the question more difficult, but a medium level question could certainly have an except on it as well. And that was a good, uh, good hint there too. Right, so we have a new paragraph here. We're going to work a bunch of questions here. Let's take a look at the question first to identify the author's main purpose. So we have a main idea question. We're going to read the first and last sentence of each paragraph, and then we're going to be able to answer this question. So let's go ahead and do that. First sentence of the first paragraph. Go ahead and read that, then we'll break it down. So I see this however, so I'm going to read a little bit more. So many observers believe that middle class Americans are dogged by debt as a result of their own extravagant luxury spending on luxury items. So anytime the author uses these uh, words that flip the logic or create a, uh, an argument here, I want to pay attention. So let's go ahead and break that down. 